Pete Shursby from Makeover Repair and today I'm going to talk about capacitor leakage and how that can be a bit of a trap when testing capacitors when you're doing a repair. So I did a repair very recently, capacitor leakage was a major problem and you need to test for it. So this is the capacitor um, out of the device that I'm repairing and it is a 6.8 microfarad 33 volt tantalum and this is what happens we take it out we put it into our capacitance meter and this is running one kilohertz c auto 7.1 or 6.8 7.1 this is this is within tolerance so that's absolutely fine I look up D, dissipation, 0.3. Sounds great. I switch on to ESR, 0.7 ohms. So this is a great capacitor. We put it straight back in and use it. Hmm. There is, however, an aspect that this is not measuring. Now this is a, what is it, a 35 volt capacitor. Okay. So I'm going to connect up to this meter now. Now this is my normal voltmeter and it's on its milliamp range and it can measure down to a microamp. I have nulled, there's a tiny little offset on the meter itself. I've nulled that off, so we're reading zero. And I'm gonna connect this up. Great. Okay. Now what we expect is for that to go down to zero and stay at zero. So we expect a little peak when it's charging up the capacitor. I have put only 20 volts across this. Let's push this up to its full 35 volts. Oh, and actually I have current limited at 100 milliamps. I can't do that. Okay, so I'll have to turn off. 35 volts, all on. Oh dear, okay, and again, I can't maintain my 35 volts because I'm current limiting in order not to destroy the device. So that is pretty useless. So, in other words, what's happening with this capacitor, and it is drawing the right way up, is that it's passing DC current. That is exactly the opposite of what a capacitor should do. Let's take its counterpart and we'll turn it on this time and we see a little peak of current and then it vanishes. So the current is, what I've got is I've got a 35 volt uh, power supply, positive is coming through here, through the positive of the meter, out the meter, through the capacitor and back up to the power supply. So we're measuring the series, series current and it should read nothing. Anything that it reads is um, leakage. Now this might flash around occasionally between zero and one just because you know that's its noise and sensitivity and stuff. But what it shouldn't do is read several milliamps running through this. So I thought it would be a good idea to take a quick look at a data sheet and the reason is there are loads of types of capacitor and they all have some leakage current. So they all have some parallel resistance and we'll let a small amount of DC flow through. The question is how much should you expect? <clears throat> so this is the data sheet for the tantalum capacitor that we've just been looking at. It's quite an easy one to read because it deals with only one capacitor. Some of them just have dozens and dozens, whole ranges of capacitors listed. So this is a tantalum capacitor, 6.8 microfarad, 10%, 35 volt DC, and it has a maximum ESR of 2.5 ohms. So that's great. And everything that we measured about the capacitor was within those, uh, the faulty capacitor was within those uh, limits. If we come down to the specifications, we can see it's a 35 volt DC, and the leakage current is 1.5 microamp maximum. So microamps maximum at 25 centigrade. So that's measured at the full 35 DC. So we apply 35 volt DC across it, 
we should not be able to measure more than 1.5 microamp. And it's as simple as that to measure it. We just apply the we just apply the voltage across it and measure the current. Now you do of course need a multimeter that can go down into the microamps. Um, and if you're going to deal with some stuff like um, some some of the metal film capacitors and the polyesters and things like that, you may need to go even lower. Um, but um, and for those, um, truthfully, if you see a microamp, they're probably faulty. But every range of capacitors will have a data sheet like this um, and if you can't find one for your specific capacitor you'll be able to find plenty for that type of capacitor and see what they are let's have a look, a look at a different capacitor so this is a different um, type of uh, tantalum uh, for multi-comp and it's uh, one of these little bead ones that we quite often see in circuits um, and uh, let's see what it says about it in here. So if we just work down the data sheet, uh, what have we got? Oh, leakage current, here we go. So leakage current, and it says not more than 0 0.1 CV UA. Um, so what, what does that mean? Well, C is the capacitance and V is the voltage. So you take, let's say for example, our 6.8, you take our 6.8 and you multiply it by 0 0.01. Um, and what is that? That is, that is, uh, you know, maybe 6.8 microamps maximum. It might be 0 0.68. I can't do the maths in my head right at the minute, but it's something like that. So you literally just do that multiplication of the capacitance and the voltage, and that will give you the maximum leakage. Occasionally, you may see it expressed as ohms, um, and often it's expressed as gig ohms because the uh, resistance, of course, should be really high. And you can just calculate; you can just use Ohm's law um, to uh, to calculate the current that you would get uh, as a result. So you just take your voltage, let's say 35 volts, 50 volts. If it's ceramic, it might be a thousand volts, and you divide it by that resistance, and that gives you your maximum DC current. So it's that simple. Um, and in the machine that I was mending, of the 20 tantalum capacitors that were in there, 10 were faulty. They all read OK on the capacitance meter, but they all leaked excessive amounts. And depending where they're on the circuit, that might make a big difference to the performance or no difference at all. But anyway, uh, my advice is if you're going to test your capacitors with the aim of keeping some of them, make sure you test the leakage. So I hope that helps, certainly for beginners. Uh, I've seen it quite a lot on YouTube where people have just tested on the capacitance meters, decided they're all right, stuffed them back in, um, and sometimes they get away with it. And sometimes they're just storing up problems for the future. So if you like this, please give me a thumbs up um, and please also subscribe, of course. Take care. See you later.